We cannot come there as we are. A prayer of St. G. A spring day already warm. In the pond, an old log juts out. Upon it, seventeen turtles sun their shiny backs. On the highest branch, a cormorant stands tall, as though he were their king. A Canada goose rests upon her eggs, her neck menacing every passerby. But in our threatened world, all have surprised, seen to be leading kinder, friendlier lives. Something is afoot. The populations have turned from survival of the fittest to your survival over mine. Round the pond, people walk at six-foot separations. Spring, yes, but we are wary. A loon slides beneath the surface. Why can't we so easily hide from this threat and from all the intricacies which distort our lives? We await the end of this event, which has forever changed our world. Yet there is more to be done. The soul must say to itself, you approach the day when you will take leave of time unto eternity. All things about me are departing as shades and will disappear. The things into which I enter are invisible and are such as I not seen ear heard, nor enter into your heart to conceive. Now, therefore, with quietness and with confidence, give up yourself unto the sovereign power, grace, truth, and faithfulness of God. Assuredly, you will find rest and peace. So that nothing which seemed undone is undone, and all which lies before is beyond the can of any man. We will lie at the bosom of Jesus, the Christ, the Son of God, God. This Son does lie at the bosom of the Father, declaring you. The world by wisdom knows not God. The finite cannot grasp the infinite. But the only begotten Son is in oneness of essence with the Father and with the Holy Spirit. Jesus as a natural figure and necessary to reveal the nature of God, so that if we, like John, lie at your bosom, we are at the very withinness of God. No doubt exiled to Patmos, John took time to examine his former self, the rude request to sit at the right hand of Jesus in the kingdom. We too have made m our mistakes about who and what we are. Our presence at your table is to recline upon the same couch at meal. Here there is great intimacy, friendship, and affection. We will have sure knowledge of you, your nature and designs. This all you have of your Father, such that he will be made fully known insofar as we are able. All knowledge of you is obtained through the Son, carried to us by the Holy Spirit. Our access, the same unmediated and endearing acquaintance with you. The must and necessary thing to come to your bosom is a state of exaltation, such as Jesus had come to be. The place is far from us. We cannot come there as we are. The Father does embrace the Son as he comes from his humanity to that presence which cannot be explained or estimated. Shall we go to Patmos and break stones, dragging a chain about our ankle and having nowhere to lie our head? We have been given our own necessary trials to come to your bosom, the communion of the Incarnate One with God, and you with us in perfect intimacy. Nothing is withheld from us except for our protection. You are so immensely majestic and glorious that the awe of it would be impossible to survive. Your bosom is a safe and timeless relation, like as the return of Jesus in his ascension to the glory which he has always held. Is our coming to you, 
glorious Holy One. For we did see the Son of Man ascend up where you before were, that eternal life which was with the Father and has been manifested to us. You say to us, Then I was by him as one brought up with him. I was daily his delight, rejoicing always before him. Thus Jesus to the Father, thus the Father to us. Your breast is divine, paternal, fruitful, is mild, secret, spiritual. We are known directly as the one person we have always been, and at the same time we are all known together as Jesus prayed, Father, that all may be one, as you and I are one. This is what it means to recline at your bosom. Amen.